when, so let's hit on communication a little bit more. As you're going through and watching, you know, family businesses through the years, what are some of the reasons, what do you think are the biggest reasons where communication breaks down? Where does that start? Yeah, you know, human beings in general are not just psychologically very good at hearing feedback about how they could do something different or better or how their behavior had a negative impact on another person or the business. Human beings are very poor at it, but you can get good at it. So I think a lot of the communication issues I come across stems from people's inability to sort of listen and hear tough stuff. But when families buckle down and really make a commitment to, we're gonna speak to each other respectfully, but we're gonna all listen to what's being said to us with an open mind before we react. When you, when you build a kind of culture in the family around that, you can have these conversations about what's really going on and make adjustments or not make adjustments and explain why. But in a nutshell, that's, that's really, really crucial. And it's, it's kind of, it's simple, um, but it's difficult because it's, it's hard to do. When someone's telling you something that's really important to you and you believe in and you've done because you think it's the right reason, they're telling you it's having a negative effect. It, that's a real tough spot. So it's easy, right? I didn't say anything that's hard to understand, but it's difficult to, to kind of follow through on, but, but essential. I would also say just one quick thought, sorry, Ira, family meetings, the families that are doing this and doing it well, they're having regular family meetings for the family in the business, um, sort of separate from, from operations, but sort of a strategic family meeting to say, how are we doing? How are we communicating? Are we getting pissed at each other and not talking about it? Because that's going to fester. How do we find a way to talk about what we're pissed about? And really important, and Mike, you and I have seen this together, families where the next generation's working super hard and they're doing a great job and people only look at putting out fires, the senior generation doesn't say, hey, you're doing a really good job. So getting good communication and being able to listen non-defensively and give gentle feedback, uh, but also not forgetting to tell, not taking for granted family members that are working really hard and doing a good job. That happens too often. Right. I would add four tools. Uh, one is an excellent book. We had this uh, person as a speaker, Sheila Heen, H-E-E-N, wrote a book called Thanks for the Feedback. You could, if you don't like to read or buy books, you could just watch the whole, whole thing on YouTube. That it's much harder to receive feedback than to give feedback. Not that it's easy to give good feedback. Um, and the book also is about how to receive feedback that's given badly. The next one is the whole field of nonviolent communication, which I hate that name, but uh, Marshall Rosenberg, you could see YouTube videos of him, brilliant guy, just talking about how to communicate with much less drama and misinterpretation. If I had one skill as a human being, it would be to be good at that. Um, another one that you can see on Google a lot called the ladder of inference, which is similar, related to nonviolent communication in that keep your interpretations out of things. When you criticize people, you know, just say you came at 930 yesterday and 10 o'clock this morning and then 11 on Wednesday, you know that we open at eight, right? You know, and, but instead of saying, you know, you people are such lazy, no work ethic, et cetera, low on the ladder of inference, you read about it. And the fourth thing is to look up any kind of decision matrix. There's my favorites, but the simplest it gets is just a list of pros and cons, and then the third column, remedies for cons, right? What can we do to get around this con? And just to use that as a way to solve a problem instead of saying, you know, you always want to go spend too much money on such and such. Um, so good tools. Well, we, we talked about stories earlier, and it's human nature when we don't know the answer to something, what do we do? We make up the story, we finish the story in our head, and that's exactly what you're talking about is you can't finish the story in your head. You have to be open to a discussion and a conversation around it, right? Right. And I was right. not bragging that I'm good at any of that. That's <laughs> it, it, pra uh, what are they? Practice, not perfection, or progress, not perfection. That's what, that's the mantra to follow. 